this is just the stuff that you can see. What you can't see is the ice that's building up on the road, that black ice. Fast asleep in the back of the house when a thief made his way through the front door. And although it promises to be much better than what we have now, it also has its own problem. Police have set up a command post. Take a look behind me. This is the scene right now. Do you have anything to say? Man. Would you like to tell us what was happening in there? The thief left behind a backpack and a knife and then ran down this road and dropped the gun. Key fobs like this or key cards like this, which allow for quick and easy access. There's still legal avenues available for Foster, but experts say those options are quickly dwindling. Now, the video we're going to show you is not graphic in nature, but still may be difficult for some to watch. The only sign of the crowd that gathered here earlier today are these blue ribbons. Folks, we talked to in Mexico saying it's going to take some time for that country to pick up all the pieces. A distracted driving in Oregon now being called an epidemic and local police agree. The fire is now under control, but they will have crews here throughout the night. Mostly people disappointed with the decision, some worried but hopeful about what's yet to come. Fans can sit back, relax behind this protective netting here and enjoy the game. We have some future soccer players in training getting excited for that match. Meanwhile, I do appreciate the rain, but I have to be honest with you. When you talk about the rain, I tune you out. Well, when you say the word oh, yeah. sun, I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you right. just, that, that's a good way to let's, do it. You let's just, hear what you know, she has to say. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's walking or running or simply standing on the sidelines showing support, the message is all about moving forward. With a toy, a new toy unwrapped, and just drop it in the bin here or hand it to one of the volunteers. Whether we like it, or not. Well, it's easy to pass by the Angel Massage Parlor without ever noticing it was there. Some might even say they were banking on it. But the Fresno County Sheriff's Office says it's been on their radar for weeks now. Do you have anything to say? Man, would you like to tell us what was happening in there? Staff of the Angel Massage Parlor making a quick escape. Three women racing to their cars with towels blocking their identities from our cameras. I was coming back in from lunch and the sheriff's department um, came in with their truck and their van and a couple other vehicles. A witness working at a business in the same building did not want to appear on camera. He says the deputies walked in and started searching the facility, which he says never gave any indication it was being run illegally. Just regular foot traffic that comes in on a daily basis. Uh, Sheriff's Vice Unit has been conducting an investigation into a massage parlor at this location for about the last six weeks. Lieutenant Matt Alexander with the Fresno County Sheriff's Office says they've had undercover deputies frequent the business to spot any foul play. Some undercover officers were solicited for sex acts, so we went ahead and applied for a search warrant. Two people were arrested for prostitution. Investigators searched cars and pulled evidence from the offices before citing and releasing the suspects. There were four people inside. Deputies say there were customers in the parlor during the raid, but nothing illegal was happening at the time. And while there is no evidence yet indicating how long the business has been operating as a front, those working only feet away say there was simply no way to tell. You just don't know what's going on in the business next door is what goes through your mind. Uh, we did not see the owner of the massage parlor speak to investigators, so it's unclear whether or not they are facing charges. But investigators say they are looking into all possible connections and possibly even links to other businesses. In Fresno, Oscar Maciel, KC24, Local News That Matters. For most people, Halloween is about candy, fun, and a few frights. But for Colleen Spragans, it's about much more. It's about family and never forgetting. And she made me a mom for the first time, and so I want to take that and just have fun with it. That fun is obvious when you look at the home of Colleen Spragans. The Madera High School gymnastics instructor outdoes herself every year with decorations, all in the name of Kylie. Happy, bubbly, always smiling, in and outgoing, energetic. In 2001, Kylie died in a tragic accident at home just two months before her first birthday. The family mourn her every August on the anniversary of her passing, but every October. So instead of getting sad, like when her birthday rolls around, I start getting excited, like, oh, I can't wait. What am I going to buy this year? What am I going to make? This year, it's a spider theme. Spragans decked out her lawn and entrance with spiders, skulls, and tombstones. And I've really just kind of gotten out of hand with it. <laughs> it's really fun. Fun, though. The neighborhood kids love it. The decorations are impressive during the day, but at night, they truly come alive.
Neighbor kids and adults flock from all over town to see the spectacle. They love it, but they run out um, screaming sometimes. <laughs> they think it's amazing because it's just so neat to see the whole production of it. Even her two children, Skyla and Jonathan, pitch in to put up some of the haunts. And they know that it's in memory of Kylie, their big sister. And while some may think it's an odd way to celebrate her daughter this way, she says she thinks Kylie would have loved the holiday as much as she does. You just got to find something that makes you happy and you do it for you and you do it for them. So I guess that's it. I don't know. Everybody has to cope differently. This is my way of doing it. But Colleen says she has no plans on ending the tradition. In fact, she intends to go bigger next year. She says Kylie would have liked that. In Madera, Oscar Maciel, KC24, Local News That Matters. Balloons, candles, and flowers here where Rockman was shot. But tonight at the Fresno Conservation Corps Youth Center where he attended classes, they shared memories about a young man simply trying to better himself. It was nothing that you did wrong. It was the cowards that was hating on you. A mother's message to her son, ripped away from her by violence. Brenda Newsom, the mother of Rockman Newsom, fighting back tears as she shared memories of her son with those who gathered at the Fresno Conservation Corps Youth Center to pay their respects. He wanted to make this world a better place. Newsom was gunned down Friday while walking from a friend's house after a long day of work. A young man giving his all to make something of his life. He wasn't a gangbanger. He didn't bother nobody. His brothers and sisters wearing an image of him smiling, reflecting the energy he put into everything. You see a young person who knew that um, he was going somewhere in life. Sean Riggins of the Fresno EOC Conservation Corps, a work training program, spoke to Rockman just hours before he was murdered. He says Rockman was getting ready to graduate in December. He wanted to be a business owner. He wanted to give back. The crowd of friends and co-workers grieving what will never be, lighting candles and using his story as a rally cry to the community and its children. We have to start protecting one another. We have to start looking out for one another. Representatives from the offices of elected officials giving their condolences and talking about the violence that continues to claim lives in Fresno. Rockman, the 45th homicide in the city so far. His family hoping someone will answer for the crime. If anybody out there know anything from anywhere or any angle, please come forward. Oh, Rockman's mother says naturally people are afraid to come forward, but she says until people do, until the community gets involved, the violence will never stop. Live in Fresno, Oscar Maciel, CBS 47 Eyewitness News. No decision Friday night in a special session allowing the community to weigh in on the superintendent's decision to walk away. But it's the board's last meeting that looms large and possibly led to this point. He is truly our heart of our district. Broken hearts in Sanger as the leader of their schools looks to step down. Matt Navo, five years into an eight-year contract worth more than $200,000 a year, requesting an early out. We love you, Mr. Navo, and appreciate you very much. Dozens packed into the room with signs of support, a shift from the board's previous meeting where tensions from contract negotiations with teachers spilled over. I want to apologize for any unprofessional and personal attacks that may have been made at the last board meeting. In standing in support of Mr. Navo, that does not mean that we do not also stand in support of our teachers. Uh, teacher negotiations is a completely separate subject. School board president Marcy Masumoto would not discuss teacher negotiations or what role they played in Navo's decision. He feels that this is the time that he needs to divert his attention to better support his family. Some teachers say negotiations have gotten ugly and believe Navo no longer wants to be a part of it. We don't want to see you walk away. We want to see you join with us and support our efforts. His supporters gathered outside for over two hours as the board discussed the terms of his resignation, at one point praying he would stay. He's inspired my children to, um, in their studies, in school, and um, motivating them. Their prayers answered for now. Through the rest of this academic year, he'll continue to be our superintendent. The board will review Navo's request to end his contract in June of next year at an open session on November 14th. In Sanger, Oscar Maciel, KC24, Local News That Matters.